I am really excited to share this series of Terry's tidbits with you. As you may already know, Salesforce is encouraging us to use Flow for our automations. But nearly every admin I know has told me Flow is intimidating. In this series of eight videos, we're going to tear down the walls of intimidation. Each video will focus on a single flow element. We'll see what it looks like in Process Builder. Then we will build that same functionality in a record triggered flow. My hope is that once you see how similar they are, you'll be ready to transition to the wonderful and powerful world of Lightning Flow. Now, I don't want you to miss a single video, so hit that subscribe button. Also, check out terrystidbits.com to download the cheat sheets that correspond with each video. A new video will be released each week until all eight have been shared. This first video teaches us how to get started. We'll learn the difference between the before and the after trigger flows. We'll also see how using the auto layout can make building our first flow much more intuitive. So this is the first in the series of eight videos covering the concept of how would you do something in Process Builder? And if you wanted to replicate that in Lightning Flow, here's exactly how you would do it in Lightning Flow. So we're going through kind of element by element, our step by step of what it looks like in Process Builder and what that same functionality looks like in Flow. So to get us started on the first video, it is really covering just the very basics of creating our new flow, choosing the right object that we're working with and some of those settings around that particular part of the functionality. The cheat sheets that you see on the screen is, are available to be downloaded at terrystidbits.com. There'll be a cheat sheet specific for a, each of the eight videos. So you'll be able to download those, have those kind of in your tool belt. If you need to go back and reference them at any time, I hope that you'll find them helpful. Again, you can download those at terrystidbits.com. So let's take a look at the Process Builder. And with Process Builder, we are going to use this one that I already have built, and it has all of our um, decisions in here that we will use for the various different types of flow that, that we are going to create. And the very first thing that you'll notice when you go into Process Builder is you have to choose the object that you're going to reference. The object in this case is going to be the account. And by selecting that, you will see that we are running this process when the record is created or when it is edited. So that's all we're going to do in this video is show you how do you do this in Flow. So let's jump over to Flow. And we're going to create, or sorry, we're going to select the new Flow button. And when we do this, we are going to have several options that appear for us. Your screen might look slightly different than this. It's okay. The one you're looking for is called a record trigger flow. And the reason we're using record trigger flows is because it is the one that most closely aligns with what Process Builder does for you. So let's jump into the record trigger flow and let's just click next. And then the next thing that we are asked is, do we want to do this in free form or do we want to use the auto layout? Auto layout is in beta, so just be aware of that. Hopefully here in the next couple of releases or so, we will be past that and it'll be available for everyone. But we are choosing auto layout for this reason. It gives you a predefined format to where you can select the elements that you want to do. Freeform takes you into a blank canvas and you have to drag the elements onto the page and it's just a little bit more confusing than it is the auto layout. So simply click on the auto layout and that'll take you into the canvas. The first thing that you would do in Process Builder is choose the object. 
we're going to do that same thing here. In Flow, we're going to click on this Choose Object. And we get a box that we can start to type in, or you can click into it, and it will show you a list of all of your objects. We're going to choose Account. This gives us the first difference between Process Builder and Flow. In Flow, we have the ability to define criteria for when this flow runs. In Process Builder, you would do this all in decisions. Here, I can choose to have this flow run on a specific set of criteria, or I can leave this blank and it would run just like it would in Process Builder where I rely on decisions within the, the uh, process to determine what it will do. So we're going to take that latter approach and simply by choosing the conditions requirements we're going to set this back to none. And you'll notice that those that criteria now goes away. We'll click done. The the other decision that we had in in process builder was do we want to run the process when it is created or when a record is created and edited? So created, created, and edited. In flow, that information is underneath this kind of middle layer of the start element. So we're going to click edit. And right here at the very top, we have the option to run the, the flow when it's created, just when it's updated, when it's created or updated. That's the one that matches Process Builder. We also have the ability to choose to run it when a record is deleted. Okay, so in this case, we're going to match what we were doing in Process Builder. So it is a create or update. Now, this next uh, portion of this section is a little bit different than what you might be used to with Process Builder. Let me take you to another uh, diagram that I've put together. This is the order of execution. I have an entire video dedicated to this diagram, and you can go and watch that if you choose to. That's also out on Terry's Tidbits if you want to take a look at it there. Process Builder runs right over here. You can see this section of the chart. But let me explain how it, how it works. When you press the Save button in Salesforce, Salesforce does a whole lot more than just save a record. When it's in that process of, of committing the record, it runs through all of these items on the left, left hand side, getting my right to left backwards <laughs> on the left hand side, it runs through all of these processes before it saves the record. After it saves the record, it runs all the items on the left hand side. And then finally, it commits that record um, completely to the database. So it's kind of like a two part save. And so when we look at that decision that we have to make with flow, the choice was do we want to run the flow before the save? So that's right here. Um, a, I'm sorry, record trigger flow before. It's the second one. So it runs before the, the save. Or do we want to run it in the after, which is right here? It's almost the very last thing that happens before the record is finally committed. Now, you might be asking, how do I know which one is the right one to choose? It's very simple. This is a probably 90% rule, 95 maybe. If you are going to be making changes to the record that triggered the flow, so in, in our scenario, we're working with the account object. If I save an account record and I want to change other items or other fields on that record, I'm going to do it in the before. If I am going to make a change to a different record, so let's say the, the contact or to, uh, maybe I want to create a task, those are different objects. And so I want to do different objects always in the after. Okay, so let's jump back over to our flow. And in this scenario, we're going to first create a before record save. We'll choose that and select done. 
Now I would recommend that you save your flow. It is possible that you may want to create two different flows and in fact in this series we're going to have both an account before flow as well as an after flow. So watch your naming conventions when you create these and I would always recommend that you include whether or not this is an account before or an account after flow. That way you don't get them confused but simply uh, save name your flow. Once you have named your flow go ahead and hit save and with that you will have completed the very first step in this series of eight videos. Now the second video that we're going to look at is going to be the decision element. So come back for video two, learn how a decision that is set up inside of Process Builder, how we would create decisions within Flow.